Welcome to Talking Giants presented by SeatGeek. I'm your host, Bob Skinny, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick. And we'll keep this short. We got an interview hour long with our good friend. Um, you know, one of my favorite people to talk about, too. Uh, on mo- most favorite person to talk to on the show, license plate guy. Justin, you're looking sunburned. I know you were down at the drag strip uh, all, all weekend, and you are sunburned. Do you, are you able to see on Zoom my bad tan line? Yes, very much yeah. so. It's apparent. I'm gonna get comments on it. Gonna Very feel much self-conscious. So. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a day that ends in a Y. Make Justin feel self-conscious on the internet. No, how are you, Bobby Skinner? I had a last uh, two good weekends uh, going to a lot of races, and uh, now we're talking to license plate guy. Today's is, today is license plate guy's birthday. Yeah, wish so, him a happy birthday. So say I love John talking giants. Happy birthday, license plate guy. Uh, and we also want to wish a happy birthday to Noah Fadoon. Noah hmm. Fadoon. Why are we wishing him a happy birthday? Because he signed up to be a Patreon member, Talk Giants Patreon member. And if you sign up to be a Talk Giants Patreon member, it's basically your birthday. Patreon.com slash Talk Giants, uh, $2 a month plus some other tiers. Bobby Skinner will send you some stickers, magnets in the mail. I would you like will... to apologize. Camera on me. Well, wow, camera these, on you. These these are going out. I've, I've fallen behind. Um, but I, I have these, these stickers are going out. Big stack. Big, Big stack. stack. You're getting them in the mail. Uh, you get to hang out, watch shows with us live when we're not doing some interviews. And also, there are two times a month, there are some shirt raffles. You can win some shirts. Uh, I'm wearing the Hog Molly shirt today because we are retiring that phrase. The new phrase is dirt bags, and we have new dirt bags shirts on the store because that is what the offensive linemen are calling each other. All right. Um, well, let's kick it to the uh, LPG interview. But first, bet on the interview. Slide in the stacks of cash this baseball season with Tracking Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. New customers can bet just $5 on any team to win and get $150 in free bets no matter what. Win or lose. Looking to turn a small bet into a big payday during MLB season? With DraftKings Same Game Parlays, you can do just that. Create your own parlay by combining multiple bets, like which team will win, how many bases will be stolen, total runs, and more. It's your shot at an even bigger payout. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you get to pause and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code JOHNBOY. Bet just $5 and get $150 in free bets no matter what happens on the field. That's promo code JOHNBOY at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner in Major League Baseball. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions, uh, restrictions apply. See show notes for details. LB trademark used with permission. And here is the one, the only, Talking Giants Ring of Honor member. License plate guy. All right. We welcome on one of our favorite guests. Probably actually all our favorite guests. Uh, we have them on every year yes. uh, a couple of times. And we, I mean, we're, we're doing stuff all the time. The one and only Joe Rubach, license plate guy. My brother, how you doing? How you uh, how you enjoying the downtime of the NFL schedule? Well, first of all, there's never downtime as a Giants fan. But I got I got to tell you, that's a, that's a great introduction because you guys are just – growing and growing which i love because i mean i knew you back when but you guys keep growing and you keep saying your favorite like it's gotta gotta change sometime you know well, i mean you just had you just had your, you just had your favorite person in the world on a couple weeks ago with thomas and i'm still i'm still your favorite i love it i love it I'm not gonna I mean, lie. don't get me wrong you know leaving the thomas interview i you know i i fist bump like you know that's probably the most fulfilled i feel after an interview but the most just enjoyable interview is, is always you i mean that's why you're part of you're wearing the shirt the talking giants ring of honor mm. uh you know one of only five members we're trying to get thomas in there got to do a little working on it to get thomas uh to be the sixth member but you know you're you're one of the oh, the OGs. Of, you're you're part of the first class of, of the yeah, talking OG, giants. Ring the OG. Of Honor. Look, look when you when you fill these with with Ring of Honor or you know the talking, are you going to put names on them? Yeah, we did. In fact, I got to send you a new one because we started doing that, adding the names. Oh, that's, to pretty, them. that's that's awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So what we did, we actually um, this can lead us to what I first want to ask you. Um, we we inducted Sam Prince uh, I into the. Into the Ring of Honor, so that's what we did. the The newest member, so we have all your names kind of around, um, around around the ring, and we have him him in there too. So, first things first, draft yeah. night. I yeah. mean, I, I, I the reason why we interviewed Sam Prince and I had him on Bleeding Blue, which is a Giants history show, is because that moment of him on that stage, and then also it was you down there with like the rest of Giants fans. Yeah. taking pictures and being part of that moment with uh you know with Kayvon and Evan Neal. So talk to me about draft night, talk to me about the the whole weekend and how that moment was for you and the rest of the Giants fans you were hanging out with. Yeah, I mean, 
first of all, you know, I'll, if you guys want, I'll get into the, the backstory of, of Sam after um, this, but I mean, hats off to that kid. Forget about what he went through, which is, which is everything, but I've never been more pumped up from another Giants fan than, than him. His energy can't be matched. And, uh, and, you know, it was, it was awesome. And knowing him, or at least me- meeting him a few times before he got on that stage and was able to be like, yo, well, it was good. You know, it was just, it was amazing. The whole night was amazing. So look, draft, draft night is, is, has become crazy. It's, it started for me, you know, I've been going to the draft when it was, you know, held in, in the city, but you know, I don't go every single year, but I have been since, you know, um, this inner circle type party that they're having. Obviously, I missed in COVID, but and I had a draft party. But but in Dallas, where it started was just it's just the most incredible thing. You, you guys, you guys have to go and somehow have to get in that inner circle type where the Giants fans go. And you know, let's call it what it is. I got there through some friends and basically if you are a sweet owner or a big donator or a big sponsor. If you get where I'm going, you're going to wind you up. Know, you know, you never, there. you don't really do anything for anybody else. So that wouldn't be you. <laughs> I, I appreciate that, but I did not get there from the giants. So I just put it out there. So, so getting in there is pretty cool because of all the other super fans and all the other people that you get to sit around. There's, there's really only 15 to 20 in Dallas, there was like 30, but now there's like 15 to 20 fans of all, you know, the, the teams and that's it. So look, you know, you, you get this swag bag, you sit down in these seats, everybody who's everybody it, they're around you, which is really cool, which you guys would love because there are players going, you know, by you and there are GMs and there are GMs that wanted jobs as GMs. And it it's just an amazing atmosphere and and then you have the guys that you know guys like you who did massive amounts of homework and they're literally in front of you and you're like i broke you down (laughs) play by play for 20 freaking games and it's it's really cool to see those guys in front of you it's so was that just a vegas thing or what because like you were you weren't just there like they came and were like, I saw the picture the next morning. I missed it all during the night of, and I started the next morning. I was like, Oh my gosh, there's like the coolest picture ever of you. Like basically hugging cave on and, and Evan Neal. Does, yeah, was so, that like a Vegas thing? Or does that happen every time? No. So that happens when you're in that inner circle type thing at the draft. So, so it's pretty cool. So I learned this in Dallas when it happened and you know, it was the first time and the camera people and, some members of the Giants front office are telling you, hey, look, they're going to come down after the pick, whoever it is, and they're going to stand right here. And there's a there's like a, a a green X on the floor where the players go and they take their their selfie stick from the Giants and they take a picture. So, of course, I started in Dallas, you know, when I left taking the X home with me. And I continue to do that. But anyway, it's just, it's just tape on the ground. But, uh, you know, you know they're coming over there to take that pick. Now, some players like, uh, you know, who did the Jets draft again? Uh, that Sauce Gardner. Dude, he's a – no, I'm sorry. The uh, the Eagles, my fault, not the Jets. Um, the the big dude, Jordan, Jordan Davis, yeah. The biggest dude I've ever seen in my life goes past me. And I, you know <laughs> – I think I put it out on my, I think I put it out on Instagram on a story. I was like, I was like, you're so weak, bro. You're going to get killed by the Giants. And I'm like, oh my God, that guy's so big. <laughs> it's like, like, he's, he's a monster. He's, he's, he's massive, bro. I mean, massive. But anyway, like he was like having a party with the Eagle fans. Like it was awesome. But again, Neil was out of his mind. Kayvon was out of his mind. So they come over and obviously, you know, you know, I wanted 55 linemen. So you know, my reaction, obviously, with three tackles on the board, it was a no-brainer to go with Kayvon. And and some had him as the number one, you know, draft pick out there. So, of course, I'm not upset. Don't be silly. But he comes over, 
And the first thing I say was, oh, man, I want to do it seven. And he looked me dead in my face and said, I wasn't going to be there. Mm. And I was like, oh, my God, he might not have been there. But it was really then he jumps in and he takes a picture and he poses and he does this. Everything he was doing with Sam on the stage. I mean, it was it was it's just it's just. And of course, you know, I absolutely loved Neil. I couldn't wait for him to come down. And he was just as nice and just as cool. Yeah, I mean, the picture might be the coolest picture like you've ever you've ever gotten the taken down in there. I mean, it, I mean, it looked like a like a like I don't know some like in a different like like Twilight Zone or something. Um, it was so, it was pretty cool. You mentioned the nine men. I think it ended up get you us Ooh. getting nine new offensive linemen because you had Glowinski, Feliciano, Gutno, mm -hmm. um, Garcia, Jamil Douglas, Evan Neal, uh, Azudu. McKeithen, and then there was one. I know. I don't know if they, we even counted Roy and Batika, the guy from uh, from Nigeria. He signed uh, Josh Rivas as an undrafted Rivas, free agent. Yep. I was Josh just going to say Rivas was was either nine or ten in that mix. But you know, getting. I think it was funny on Twitter, obviously, because you know I didn't stop getting. You got your nine men, and you know I really wanted about as many linemen as you could count, besides the Lemieux and the Gates and the, you know, everybody that's going to battle for position, you know, this year. And I really want, I really want an open cask, you know, for everybody to just go out there and, and prove they need a job. And I think that's going to happen. Yeah. I, th I think so too. You know, like there's a guy that either Garcia, Bredesen, you know, one of those guys isn't going to make the team and, and where last year they would have been starters, like, you know, automatic starters. Um, right. I mean, you, you've been, You've been posting the three players that just don't have jobs and to think that they played and started you know but kind of bothers me yeah it's it's brutal but we're, we're moving on from that we're moving on moving the, on, the, moving on. The, 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 yeah I, I don't want the last thing from the draft night or at least the last thing i have yeah after the jones one how how like aware are you of your reaction or is it just the emotions take over every single time look it's a hundred percent emo great question bobby like Great question, because it's a hundred percent emotion. Um, you know, you're sitting there, all amped up. I don't get to see the TV. I don't get to see what's going on. It's like being at a game. I don't get to see replay. I don't get to see what's going on. I don't get to see what the you know what all you know, the interviews going on. So, you know, just like at Jones, I didn't want Jones at six. You know, I wanted a a defensive player that's going to wreck havoc and the giants needed one. So my, my reaction was my reaction. Fast forward to this one. You have to be an idiot. If, if you were upset with Kayvon, but my reaction was I wanted one of the linemen to come out of Roger Goodell's mouth or Sam Prince's mouth. That's what I wanted. Um, you know, but again, all you had to do was think about the three linemen. I should say two, but you have to say three tackles were left on the board and the Giants were going to get one of them. And since I already had both nameplates, I was golden. You know, I didn't care who it was. I wanted Neil, but I didn't care who it was. And then, of course, you know how it played out. Fell into the Giants' lap, and everybody should be happy. Everybody. Oh, no, we were, especially after the first round, we were we were totally through. So I, I, I just thought of this, talking about the reaction. This is the first time we've had you on since we were at that Tampa game, and Monday Night Football got the – the you know this stinks one which i was right next to i'm still salty at espn for not getting me i was i mean i was right next to you and they didn't get me in the shot for that um and it it was one of those moments like at, when we did the fan fest i'm like man lpg gets swarmed like it's it's like it's like it was like we felt like our head was spinning like saying hi to everybody it was like you had like times five um i was like man this has got to be brutal for lpg do you had people yelling at you the entire time they're like hey dude this guy stinks and you're just like trying to you're trying to be nice the entire time i don't know how you don't just lose it and just tell people no, to leave you alone it is it's tough look you you know i tell you guys this all the time you you take the bad with the good you know uh david tyree makes that catch and i'm like oh my god and i was the oh my god guy and then i almost think 
like it's ESPN or ABC or I think it's somebody's job now to only get me when it's bad, not good. <laughs> I, I to their had to their credit, to to defend them, there hasn't been much great, uh, you know, uh, lately. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. And I, you know, again, I'll take that. If if they never catch me again with anything good, and I stick with the oh my god guy, I'm I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, You're good with that. I, I, I mean, we were. I was only down there for 15 minutes with you, and I was starting to get angry. Like, I, the guy kept on yelling <laughs> at you to bench Daniel Jones, and I started like, "Hey, you know, he's not like the decision maker. You know, he's just he, like he also was just watching the game." Uh, uh, like, you, like you, me know, and you. you guys, and you guys know this for your growth on social media, you're gonna get the venting, and it's gonna be nonstop because when you become not a source not a source when you become a a platform and and a, a good amount of following they want to hear they want to vent to you guys like guys do you hear me get it out there we all should be one whether you agree or not their opinion matters to them yeah right i want to i want to bring up Kayvon again and yeah. The, the thought that I had, and the, honestly, the thing that was that got me really excited about him draft night and then the day after, seeing all the interviews that he did, because we all know the kind of player that he was. I feel like going into the draft, I mean, especially when you have a top 10 pick, it's like, all right, you kind of know these guys like the back of your hand. You see the highlights. You see what they're capable of. And Kayvon was one of those guys that he was the dream player, and we got him. So we knew what he was on the field. But then that night, we saw what he can be off the field, and we saw yeah. the personality that he can have. And that is not something that we have had in what feels like a long time, even though it has not been a long time, but it feels like it's been a long time because it's been a lot of losses on the board. So I want to hear from you because you've been through the run of the mill as a fan, through the good, through the bad, superstars, not superstars, and you hung out with a lot of them too. Yeah. Talk to me about this superstar element that you think Kayvon Thibodeau is going to bring to this team that desperately needs it in a New in a city like New York. Yeah, again, Justin, what a great question, and I love it not the normal question that I'm going to get and which makes me even more ready to answer it. We haven't seen, we're going to see something in Kayvon that we haven't seen since. That's some wide OB, receiver. Some wide receiver. And I say that because listen, he's a good looking guy. He's going to be a great athlete. He can talk very well. The, I think that he is going to take over New York. And I don't know if it's good or bad right now, because of course you're going to get the people that are going to be like, oh, shut up. He hasn't done anything yet. We know, we know. And then, uh, you know, his first uh, partnership or contract was with some bubble bath company or so, I don't know, whatever. And then, he, you know, he's taking a picture in a bubble bath, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, this guy is going to be something else. Um, but I don't care what he does. Nobody is going to care what you do if you win. Yep. If OBJ was a winner here, and we went to the playoffs with OBJ, so give him a break. I'm not talking about the interview. I'm talking about OBJ as, as a whole. If he pees in the end zone or kicks a, a kicking net or you know does whatever, we laugh and brush it off if we're winners. Yeah. If you are losing and Kayvon puts up a bubble bath that night, oh, I lost, but at least I'm kicking my feet up with Calgon, you know, wh whatever it's going to be, he's going to catch a lot of shit. So let's let him be him. I think he's going to be electric and eccentric. Mm. So I want him to do him. I heard, so I heard a great quote from him, and I think it was during the interview process where he was meeting with the coaches. I think he said it to the, I don't know if he said it to Shane or did, I don't know who he said it to when he was like, look, if I don't have a sack and we're five games in, we got to sit down and break up film for the next guy I'm going against so I could change that. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, that, whatever you just said, that channel that and i don't know what he did but you guys better post it <laughs> no I, I remember that that was from the combine uh you know they're like the, giants the were... combine yes yes 
Yeah, I, I remember that was that was that was when like Kayvon started really getting on the radar. It, it's still crazy to think that you know, obviously stuff changes, but if you know, week one, it's like Giants end up getting the first and second pick. I think everyone's like Evan Neal, Kayvon Thibodeau, and the Giants ended up making yeah. that happen. I mean, look, look, I, you nobody should lose sight of the fact that Kayvon was the number one pick for most of the college year. Yes or no? Yes. And then it, it obviously it evolves. It's a fluid situation. It changes, but I don't care. He's one of the top three people, or I should say two, that were at top of the draft the whole entire time. Right. I love it. Going back to some bad memories. How many tickets you'd so if people don't realize, uh, you know, you you give tickets away to people who haven't been to games or and, and you know things of that nature. Last year, it seemed like you were having to give away, like, how, how many tickets? What was the most tickets you gave away before a game? Because I remember talking I, to you about it. I think it was the old, uh, the Raider game, and I think it was 77 tickets or something like that. Wow. It, was a, it was around that. I, I can't remember, but I have to be honest with you. I I hope that I don't do that this year. And obviously, for, for so many reasons. Obviously, no one's giving their tickets up when there's a winner. And... I'm, I swear to you guys, I'm already getting messages. Can I be on your list for a ticket giveaway? Like, no, I don't. I don't have a list right now. In May, it was May, and two, I don't want to keep doing it. It's not easy, guys. It's I got to download and I got to transfer and I got to send and I got to put names and everything in it. It sucks. It takes up most of my tailgating, and it sucks. But how do you get service there? You- yeah, and I. <laughs> oh, but when you and when you bl- don't have it, it's even worse. You were doing I, it while you were tailgating. Yeah, most of them are late. Like, yeah, brutal. Say, yeah, it's brutal. I would say most of the ticket giveaways, Justin, were from seven thirty to eleven thirty. I am radio silence game days, and it's not because yeah. I want to be, but it's because I just can't post anything. Right, and you let I alone mean, send emails, send text messages, send tickets. Yeah. Oh my! It, it's, it, look, it's 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 great to get these tweets. You know, hey, thanks, LPG. And let me let me clarify that. I like getting those tweets that say, you know, thank you, LPG. I'm sitting here with my dad because of you, mm. but it's really not because of me. It's because some other dude or some other girl didn't want to go and was like, LPG, take these. Hope someone chokes on them, you know? And and, then I, I get to, you know, forward them off. And that's, that's why I said to you guys, when you're a platform and they want to vent, they're going to come to you guys and you're going to listen to them. You're, you're pushing off some credit. Like you just mentioned, I mean, that kind of like consumed, I remember talking to you about it and it was like, it consumed you on game day mornings, you know? And that's why, you know, and and you know, I hate to I hate to give you compliments because I don't like giving people compliments, but it's like you know, people are like oh well, you know, it's not his. It's like it's it's a pain in the ass to get all that stuff done, but like you continually do stuff like that, and that's why like guys like Logan Ryan are shouting you out, and they're not just saying hey, I'm going to give away twenty tickets because they realize it's it's easier to have someone else do it for you than yourself, you mm-hmm. know. So yeah, um, that's true, and thank you for saying that. That was, I mean, stuff like that is probably my you know that. Logan Ryan, you know, Joe Judge, who sent me like 30. Um, he definitely needed some giant fans in the building, but, or maybe he didn't. But, uh, you know, guys like that, like that's 50 tickets right there. And, you know, like you guys saw, I posted the other day, like out of the blue, I got that Logan Ryan uh, game day jersey. You know, I, I don't know if you guys saw it. I posted yeah, it. Yeah, I saw that. Right. I mean, that, that means more to me than anything. Or, Kyle Rudolph said, Hey, I, I have a bunch of cleats I want to send you to give, you know, to your charity of choice or do whatever the hell you do when you do that. And that's a guy who already gave me eight hundred dollars for Duncan Monday. Yeah. You know, and then he sends me a bunch of cleats and he writes a note. He's like, Look, uh, sorry for such a short time in New York. He goes, I unfollowed mostly everybody, but I'm gonna hang on to yours. I'm like, ah, that's pretty cool. You know, that that stuff to me is is pretty cool. And then in, uh, in a and I'm in, surprised in Kyle season. Rudolph is still doing anything for Giants fans, to be honest, because wow. because we weren't very nice to him, you know. Uh, he he knows it. 
<laughs> no, but in a you know, but in a in a lost season though, you know, I, I I don't care how bad the Giants are. Every Sunday, I'm still going to enjoy going to Giants yeah. games because also, yeah. like, I, I don't care if I've been to one or I've been to you know 150, however much I've how many I've been to. You know, I'm still going to enjoy it, and I guarantee if it's your first time, whether their team's 0-10 or 10-0, and I think people do enjoy it. So in a lost season, doing stuff like that, I mean, that was so that was, that was was a really cool time. It was cool to follow that. I mean, uh, Justin, thank you, but think about it. You know, season is not very long, and we don't wait all these months. You know, we say it all the time as Giant fans, I, as football fans, we're not going to wait, you know, six months – to, to, to be done in October. And that yep. sucks because as fans, we have been, we've been yep. done. So now my attention goes to not, not giants football, but like charities and giving tickets away. Nah, that sucks. I'd rather to take a back yeah. seat and I love charity, but it's a back seat and I hate it. So, so that leads me to this. What is your energy like this year? There are some fans that don't want to have any expectations. And Bobby and I are kind of opposites with this. I am expecting progress. I uh, am expecting well, yeah. more wins. Bobby yeah. is like, Bobby, I think, Bobby, you're going in with the mentality of, I don't want to be hurt this year. So what is your energy like heading into this year? Are you being a little bit more reserved? Or are you saying, let's freaking go for this? Yeah, uh, Justin, I never am cautiously optimistic, ever. I don't I don't know what that word is. Every year is a new year. You're zero and zero, and we're playoff bound no matter what. I have never looked at the Giants as a rebuild. Um I was all in when they were spending $200 million for Eli Manning. And I'm all in when they're not picking up Daniel Jones's fifth and he's going to lead us to the playoffs. So yeah, I'm all in bro. Why? Who gives a shit? If you're cautiously optimistic, what good is that going to do for you? So when they win, you could say, you know what? I was cautiously optimistic, but now they're winning. I love it. Or, or they're losers and you go, you know what? I was cautious and they suck. It doesn't matter which way you go. It doesn't fucking matter. Pardon my language. <laughs> I mean, you can yeah, get Bobby. Here's the thing is I'm. Yeah, yeah, yeah Bobby. Here's, yeah, Bobby. Here's my thing is we got, it's our fifth coach in eight seasons now. And honestly, I still have a bad taste in my mouth about how stuff went down with Joe Judge. Like I, I you know, by the halfway point, I was saying that he should be fired. But also it's like, I just felt like kind of. Like, he got screwed over by the organization. Like, they told him they give him time, and the, the first year was good. The hype around him was maybe a little overhyped deserved. So, I'm just, like, a little jaded where I'm, like, I'm just waiting for it. It's like, I, I wanted Joe Shane. I wanted Brian Dable. I'm ex- I am excited. I have expectations for things to be better. But, like, I just, I'm not as hyped as maybe I have been in years past. Do, do you guys mind if I talk about that Joe Judge thing for a minute? Go for it. I, I love hearing those things. All right, look. So, you know, you know, I've, I've become friendly with the family, and I was at a few parties at his house, and I'm going to I'm gonna spill some beans, and I probably never do. You know, most of my stuff I keep, you know, closed up about because then I don't have any friends. But, but uh, you know, I'm agreeing with you, Bobby. Uh, I don't normally go against the organization, but uh, – you know, I think he got a really raw deal and he was promised a lot of things that wasn't weren't they just weren't delivered and he was coaches were forced on him and he tried to granted I'm hearing this you know not from the Giants organization uh, but but I'm hearing you know he tried to talk to Gettleman and get up you know judge was dead to him and the season was in the midway point. And I still think the Giants were going to hold on to Judge. And he had the last couple of games to prove it. And that's when he had the speech. And that's when he had the 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 uh, uh, handoff, snakes. the third and nine. Snakes. Yep. I mean, blatantly honest. And then and and I think that he had to go. But I believe what you believe, Bobby. I truly believe he got a raw deal. The Giants should have closed up shop with everybody before they hired Judge. And now the ones that are going to reap that benefit is 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 Shane and Dable. Judge tried to get Dable. Judge tried to 
He tried to yeah. get these people in. It's a crazy thing, yeah. And I think the Giants were like testing the waters with the big toe. And last year, they had to go in. Yeah, it's and it was why I was so frustrated after 2019 when they fired Shermer and not Gelman. It's like this is I was like this is going to put us in a bad situation because this team's not necessarily two years away from maybe you know maybe two years away from being a playoff team, but not being like a, a real contender. Um, and that's what was so frustrating. And you know, obviously Dable was blocked the past two years, but I think Dable's contract ran up, and and supposedly him and McDermott didn't get along. The you know, no, most they of, did not. so yeah. from the outside in, you're like, why would Dable go from the Bills to the Giants? But like that was a lot more real than people realize. Um, so it's not that I don't think that judge should have been fired. I did. You know, it was just I hated the way everything went this past year. Um, keeping Gettleman around, keeping Garrett. It's just. It was just he instead of him just being the head coach, he was constantly fighting battles, it seemed like behind the scenes yep. with stuff. So constantly and even worse, he tried to get a meeting with Mara and he couldn't get it. Like every every door was shut on Judge before the season ever ended. And that sucks. And that's hearsay, but I heard from a couple of people. Then on the flip side though, and I know you guys know the same guys I know. But a lot of guys say that things are a lot better right now. Things are a lot calmer. Things are a lot not, you know, in stone. Yeah. You know, I feel, they feel like they could be themselves. So so there are ups and downs. But then again, Definitely. I don't care. I don't care. You have that Win. with any coach. With any coach. You could yeah, say and, whatever and- you want. You could say what you liked and what you didn't like about anybody. And this is the honeymoon period. And again, like. The way that Dable is right now is great, but if if they are two and seven and there's time to hand down discipline and you haven't kind of there could be issues like that. And that's how you know, that's kind of how stuff stumbled, you know, got out of control with McAdoo. You know, it's like it's like they he didn't have the respect when it was like, I'm gonna suspend this guy for a game, you lose the whole law. It, it you know, they need you but Dable, like you, you said think- with Kayvon, all it comes down to is winning and losing. Yeah. Like that's really all that matters at the end of the day. Um, do you think you Dable? Know. Do you think Dable can can react and hand out punishments, or is he or is he going to leave that stuff to Steve Smith? I'm just curious. Yeah, uh, Steve Smith definitely got me. Um, well, he just <laughs> lied, so it wasn't even a joke. He just lied. Um, that's <laughs> my that's joke, that's my that's my spinning of of getting fooled. If I um, if I was Dable, I don't know. I, would just, I think he's I, kind I of. I, a... t- I turn around. I turn around to wink, and I was like, wink, just come on, get on his ass. That's what I would do. <laughs> Yes, I think Wink definitely could. It's I, I I don't know. Like that's that's kind of a question is like who and you know and they don't necessarily have the players on the team that you know I yeah. was talking with Tolson and we've talked we've actually talked about it a lot on the pod lately is like you know those Super Bowl teams with the Giants they had not just captains like that team was full of leaders of guys who held each other accountable constantly and it's like dude Dogs. you know this is a very young Dogs. team and guys who you know even like some of their some of their leaders aren't those type of guys you know and it's you know always be yourself you know it's like the same way Eli wasn't that guy but it's like you know Saquon's maybe not that type of guy Shep's maybe not that type of guy um you know and it's like it's, you just need balance to everything so again you know, that's, that's what a, that's that's such a that's such a great point because you know you got me thinking like you know, I could see Brandon Jacobs getting in your ass. I could see, you know, from a talk to an oath to all those guys. You're right. I mean, I could tell you ten right off the top. And this and this team right here, you're right. I don't I don't I don't know if I can give you five. Yeah, so I, I'm just a little jaded at this point. You know, I'm I'm excited. I think the offense is gonna be fun. It's the first year where I have no personal pressure on Daniel Jones because it's if he if he's it, he's it. If he's not, he's not. You know, I, I it's then then you move on, you know. Um you know, so I don't like have the stress of Daniel Jones like I did in years before, where it's just everything riding on him. But I, I am excited to see what it is. You know, there's reason really, to be excited for the offense. Really scared about that, to be honest with you. Uh, no brainer to turn down his fifth. Um, he he proves it this year. Uh, gets franchised, makes twenty five million dollars, and does it again. Yeah. Um, but I'm really nervous about it because the Giants are building and. In a year or two, if he's not the guy, the most important position in all of sports, in my opinion, you're starting over. And then, you know, I don't want, don't give any crap about going out and getting a Tyrod, you know, ta- Taylor. Don't, don't tell me you're going out to get a, a B-rated quarterback that's going to lead you to the playoffs. Congratulations. And then you're going to fall on your face when you get there. So, 
you know, I'm really nervous about that. Yeah. And I think every Giant fan, it, every Giant fan is. Yeah, and that's where you, if, if it doesn't work, you just kind of, you know, you don't need the first or second pick. You know, Mike Kafka, they got their QB, what, 11th or 12th overall, and Mahomes maybe 10th. You know, Josh Allen was 7th, you know, through a couple trade-ups. So it's not always, you know, first or second pick or bust. Um, it's just yeah. getting your guy. And, it's getting you know, your and guy. that may take time. And that that's the thing about the quarterback spot with this new regime is that it may take time. You know, the the Bills had a you know, they had to have a year where, you know, they had Tyrod Taylor starting. Um, you know, the, it, it may take time. You don't want to force that QB pick. So, Joe, I mean, can you can you imagine this year where Daniel Jones doesn't come back and Tyrod Taylor's the starting quarterback next year because they don't feel comfortable taking a quarterback this year? I mean, well, that that would be I don't want to think about that though. I no, I mean, I mean it's a, but it's such a such a valid point justin it's such a valid point that that can happen and then the giants are sitting there next year looking for a backup to taylor in the offseason you know <laughs> so, Davis so, Webb. so i really you know hey look you're right we don't have to talk about it right now because you know daniel jones is is ready to rock and roll and i don't know if you guys caught what davis webb said first of all i'm a big davis webb guy hilarious dude and a hell of a softball player and hopefully my game will be back next year but davis webb said by far the smartest quarterback i've ever been around and he's played with mahomes and he's played with josh allen he's played with eli manning so getting that kind of vibe and he said that i don't know i like that now don't get me wrong don't 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 kill me being smart and and winning two different things being smart and throwing a touchdown pass to to robinson that everybody says he sucks about. Oh my God, that drove me crazy. The first pass a bomb, it's completed, but it was wobbling or something, and the fans <laughs> go crazy. Oh my God. It's it's that time. Yeah, and that's why and this is where I'm like in the middle right now, is you know me, I was a Daniel Jones guy. Like I was a Daniel yeah. Jones guy, but going into this past year, it's like make or break. And he actually kind of he was like an average or so quarterback last year, and then the injury obviously uh left a huge black mark on it but if you look at the season objectively and and you talk to people around the league like you know besides just casual people but people actually watch like you know daniel jones wasn't half bad last year he had some bad moments like that tampa game we were at and um and some others but for the most part he, uh, he was he was fine um in a very bad offense and that's the thing is was dan and we who were we were talking with i think we were talking with entertainer but it's like the Daniel Jones rookie season was that some great, really good, or even good offense? No, but it was a rookie who had turnover issues, and an offense. Their wide receiver one was Darius Slayton. Their tackles were Nate Solder and Mike Remmers, and yeah. Pat Shermer, who I thought was a pretty good play caller, nothing special but pretty good. So and now we have the tackles hung out. We have a lot more talent at the wide receiver group, um, and then Brian Dable, who's either you know Brian Dable and Kafka, who are either going to be. Like at the, at least at le- Pat Shermer's level and better, and you have a f- a f- you know a smarter Daniel Jones, you know someone who un- knows the NFL game a little better that is going to be better, and it's going to look a lot better, especially from what it was, uh, you know, these past two years. Yeah. But the question is that's how a, a, how much better will it be? Yeah, g- good point. I I viewed it. I viewed Daniel Jones' rookie year as let's go back to cautiously optimistic because I viewed him as someone that wasn't going to dink and dunk like Eli where he caught so much crap for it. Um, which by the way, I think he will do a lot of that this year, uh, uh, Jones, but you looking at Eli Manning more down the field and legs. So, yeah. And and that's and that's it. the thing is they took all they took away that was the biggest thing they took away his aggression so I'm I'm excited for them to be aggressive because you know that was it sucks that he literally got hurt on the second play mm-hmm. of being free from Jason Garrett the second play I know uh, hey let me, know. let me let me ask you guys a question like and I I bring this up a lot but I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say like if the Giants were winning would Daniel would Daniel Jones be able to play in some of the, I'm not talking about the neck, the seriousness of the neck, but all his injuries. If they were winning, would he be playing or would he be out? Would they be keeping him out? I had somebody oh. tell me that he would have been playing, but I also I think, think so too. But I, I don't know. That I mean the neck stuff is 
serious. But uh, again, that he was, was scary. running around and it throwing the ball right. and yeah, stuff. Joe, Justin's right. I mean, they that's, had him throwing scary. the ball sixty yards and stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, that, but that's that's the scary part, though. You know, it's like not knowing, not not knowing. Number one, but also number two, seeing somebody do the normal things that they would do anyway. It's like you're not being hit in practice. So seeing yeah. the, the things that somebody would do normally, especially in an NFL quarterback, but then hearing neck not being cleared for contact, like it, it that was just a scary time where yeah. it's like, yeah, you know, I, I can say, yes, he would have played. I could say, no, they should have kept him out. He would have stayed out. It, but not knowing was probably, not knowing is probably the thing that was most scary, but just seeing him do the normal things and then, oh, no, he still can't play. It's like, well, what's going on here? That was, that yeah. was scary. Yeah. It's like, it's like, yeah, you're right, man. It's like, it's, you know what? It's like the Nick Gates right now, not knowing. Yeah. Like seeing him, you know, yeah. seeing him, there was a video of him like dunking over one of the linemen and he's walking around and it's like, but there's still no timetable and there's still no projection on yeah. the future. And it's like, well, damn, I just, you just want to know as football <laughs> fans that's, it, that really at the end of the day, you just want to know when is this guy going to be yeah. back? Is he okay? Is he okay? Is he going to be good? So that's, that's the thing we would stress about that. Yeah. Justin, that's funny. Cause, cause that was that. That was that video of him dunking over Pert, and I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh my god!" Like he's back in practice, ripping guys up. I love it, but he's really not, and and like, don't know if he'll ever play again. To be honest with you, yeah, it oh, sucks. It, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, sucks. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know. I I, I, I want. I want him back, and I know yeah. he wants me back. So I know if, if there's no that's something we've said though, and it may sound a little corny, but it's like you know what? If there's someone who can overcome the odds. This is going to be Nick Gates because he's yep. done it a million times already. You know, um, you know, you know. It's it's funny speaking of Nick Gates. Well, you got, you know, Bobby. You said, uh, you know, you pushed me for taking a tiny bit of credit here and there, and I and I really do appreciate that. I I don't, and maybe I should sometimes. But you know who doesn't? Nick Gates. Nick Gates basically is one of us. He's a Justin. He's a Bobby. He's a Joe. He's like another guy. He's like, I don't even know. I don't even know. Am I really in the NFL? This is crazy. You're a freaking captain, let alone in the NFL. What are you talking about? So, yeah, I I, I want him back so bad, man, just, just for personal reasons. He's just such a good guy. You know, going and attacking other players if they get anyone near your quarterback. Just someone, someone you need and want on your team. That's all. He yeah. wants to play blitz ball with us. We gotta, you gotta come with us when I'm at. I'm well, one, we got the I'm van. We gotta get you in the van. You guys got to come to our warehouse and we'll do play during training camp and do like a, you know, a, a blitz ball game or whatever. I mean, it's yeah. basically, told, it's like I don't know right if you've now, seen it. It's like wiffle ball. Yep, he told me right now blitz ball and pickleball on his list. Pickleball not so much with his leg. All right, well, well then blitz ball. You know, no I mean, running. I'll throw you some have... balls right down no the running. pipe. He's he's the best hitter on the team too. From what you're, you know, you say from the softball games, Bobby. If you remember the stadium, and if you don't, it's it's a, you know the New York Boulders. The dude hit it out of the stadium. He hit it out of the stadium. <laughs> he didn't hit it into the into the crowd. He hit it out of the stadium. So uh, he he's been asking me too. When the hell's the softball game coming back? So you know, maybe next year we'll do it up. Yeah, it's it's good. So, but are are you gonna you you gotta you're gonna come party in the van outside of training camp at least a couple times, but, right? So uh, it's so funny when you when I when I obviously you guys have to tell me everybody's reaction when you posted, you know, the interview coming up and the picture of you guys and and Thomas and I was like, are they in a van? A sprinter? That is sick. I mean, it was like such a great, it's such a great spot. You go anywhere you want and do those interviews. I love it. So yeah, I'm a hundred percent one in that van at camp, hundred well, percent. That you know that event, you know we were that charity event. You know we talked with you about it, you know because you were out of town. It ended up getting canceled because rain. So I went up there, and since I was going up there, I was like, uh, you know, we had the van or whatever, and I just we were going to interview him through Zoom, like that was the plan this off season after the draft is over. Yep. And then when I was going to be up there, I was like, hey, I'm going to be up in Jersey. Like, would you be cool with us coming outside of the? Out of the side of the you know facility, and you come interview at the practice one day. I was ex- I was expecting him to maybe dodge it, and he said, "Yeah." So with that, I mean that's it's not some grand story, but we knew that once we tweeted out the picture of us in the van, it was going to go off. So we were pretty I, excited. I about mean, that. I was I was first one. I'm like, oh my god, they're in a van. It's sick. I thought it was great, and yeah, he's a stand up dude too. So and yeah, that that event is what July something twelfth or something. Yeah, July eighteenth. Oh, it's a 18th. it's a TBD on uh on if we're gonna be able to go, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep you posted. And it yeah, took me a, 
it took me about an hour for like Bobby, Bobby and I, I, I was in the office in Manhattan and I was on the phone with Bobby and he's like, yeah, we're going to do it from a van. I'm like, what? Like, what, what are you do? And I, and I, you know, you, you know me, I'm the logistics guy. I'm the producer, yeah. the editor. And, and I, and I do all that stuff. So I'm like, what do you, I need to see how this looks like. Like, what are you saying? We're going to do it from a van. And he just kept on saying it. I'm like, I don't know what that means. Justin, so it took me do, a good hour know. for me to like get behind it. I'm like, okay, I get it now. You do know I he's from it. Florida, right? Hey, but Bobby, Bobby makes things happen, man. He just, uh, he says, I want to do it. something. We're going to do it. And lo and it. behold, it happens. So it was, I love uh, it. That's speaking awesome. of which I want you to, I need some of your source game. And this is, I haven't asked you before, so I have no knowledge if you know or not. Are, are we getting a, I know we're going to camp again. Are we getting fan fest again? Uh, mm. I know that fan fest was talked about, so I don't know where it's at. Um, you're getting all the dates for training camp. You're getting all the fans coming back. You're getting the, 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 the bleachers put out again. Yeah. Same thing as it used to do. So that's as far as I was, I was told, I mean, you got the you got the draft night, right? We, did you guys? I didn't even ask you. Did you guys make it up for the Giants and Jets party? No, we did it. We 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 did we live stream from the office. Okay, I did. I did. Oh, yeah. You know what? I think you told me that if I didn't go to the draft, that's right. That's right. You did say that to me. But but I think um, I think we're business as usual. To be honest with you, and I would fan fest is awesome. I love it. Well, that, that was, was the great. first time they did a fan fest because they didn't do training camp. So. Knowing the Giants, I feel like they're going to, all right, camp's back. We're not doing the Fan Fest either. Which Yeah, one or the other. I, um, I mean, look, I I want it, you know, selfishly because they always get the old Giants back. And it's just, I don't know, you're right, it's just a fun time. And I'm not, I don't always dig the the dual stuff. I don't want to do stuff with Jets and Jets fans. I agree. Not, I hate that. I yeah, hate, I'm I hate. A, the, me too. Yeah, I, I, it's one thing, the draft, because the draft is one night. You can't have your, but. But if if they try and do like a giant the Giants Jets practice as a mix, like no, just let let us have our thing, let them have their thing. Like you know, don't try and you know save a buck and try you and guys, get as many guys, people in here at one time. You guys think in in our lifetime, and and the and some of your some of your audience that will ever have our own stadium or vice versa, the Jets will. No, no, I don't think so either, Justin. No, <clears throat> I just don't see it. I mean, how long do stadiums last? The old a, stadium lasted about what 30, 38, 30, 35 years, thirty eight years. But well, opened up at seventy six. Oh, okay. Seventy five, seventy six season. And then, it, and then, what did we? The new one was 2000, 2000 or two thousand ten. Two thousand ten. Two thousand ten. Okay, so you know, I'm, I'm no good at math. You do the math. Math. I mean, and these ones were paid for by the 25. owners too, so. You know they're gonna uh, try no, and get no, no. every ounce out of them as Bobby, possible. You're out of your, you're out of your loop, Bobby. You're out of your loop. They're paid for by the owners. My ass. Well, fill PSL me in. and we paid. Well, we built that stadium. Yeah, the oh. PSLs. Yeah. The Giants and the Jets. Think about it, Bobby. Think about you being a Jets fan and I being a and I'm a Giants fan. We both. First of all, PSLs were sold a bag of goods. When I remember being told that I would have, you know these tickets and I'd have them forever and I can have them for concerts at the stadium and I'll be in my own seat at the stadium. Not once did I think, well, shit, Bobby has the same seats as me as a jet fan. Is he going to, is he going to concerts? Are we, is he going to sit on my lap? How the hell is that going to work? It was um, a bag of goods and we built that stadium. Every time we, you come on, you and Justin end up bitching about PS, uh, PSLs. <laughs> yep. You know what? You know what? Because hold on. I will tell you that, you know, I'm older than you guys. And I watched my father. You know, I went with my dad to take a train to get to the stadium and take a bus to get to the stadium. And I watched when my dad brought newspaper or a piece of carpet to put under my feet when it was cold. And when it was halftime is the only time I could break out the sandwiches that mom made. And stuff like that, and drink out of the thermos, and and have the the. I remember the four freaking old guys with beanie hats who looked like they've been there since the twenties, let alone the seventies. And and I bitch about that because it was a family oriented thing, and that's why Giant fans get sometimes get beat up about being an older crowd because they're so used to being called that family oriented place. And then the PSL came, and the suit and ties like. 
like MSG and it just kicked everybody else to the curb. And, and then, you know, it started watching with the Yankees and, and seeing how much that place was absolutely filled to the gills every night. And then the legends came in and the first 20 rows are empty because there's stuff in their face with lobster, which by the way, I've been in there a couple of times. It's absolutely phenomenal. But I'm saying, you know, you don't want it empty. Well, you know, every single stadium is the same way, every single one. And if you're not PSL, you will be, a, you will be PSL. Yeah. It just sucks. That's all. No. And I think that's honestly one of the best ways to put a lot this, this line has been said over and over by myself. And I think it's said too much without being fully explained. MetLife has lost the character that the old giant stadium have. It doesn't have the same character, but I think you just described it perfectly. Like the old giant stadium was that family atmosphere. And, you know, it was the families that have had the tickets for generations and generations. And then MetLife, it's lost that. So it's lost that character that the old stadium had. And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that you, you have to go with the times. I mean, if you're spending, you know, $25, to, to forty five dollars a ticket, <laughs> and now it's one fifty is the cheapest ticket, something like that. So, so you know, it already priced out a family of four. You know, if you had a PSL of six to eight to ten tickets, I don't know if anybody had ten. You know, six four to six tickets, you probably went two to four. You know, you just couldn't afford the ten thousand, twenty five thousand, fifty thousand, hundred thousand, you know, dollars for that PSL. So, I think the normal person got priced out and. You know, it's funny. Everybody says the Giants are an old organization fan base wise. But I don't I don't always agree to that in this new stadium because I know the grandfathers and the fathers that said, no way, I'm not getting a PSL. Yeah. So if they didn't get them, the, the younger ones got them. So I don't I don't always agree when when people say it's such an old, old crowd. It's not in my eyes. I mean, you guys complain, and yet the Giants do things like give us medium Pepsi's per one per family. You know, it's You're it's, right, dis- one, it's distasteful. One per, you could have ten tickets. This was the thing that got me. You can have ten tickets, and you got one. That was. That's I was so thankful they did that because that was the funniest thing ever. Was like, oh. giant, there hasn't been a lower point of the franchise in a long time. Oh, and you know what's and crazy? Like, here's a medium. Pe- the only worst time they could have done that was like after the Eli benching. <laughs> and you know, and you know what's crazy, and this is like first world problems. The one time, the one time I was asked to sw- to sit in a suite, it was the DraftKings suite. It was the free medium pe- free medium Pepsi you're, you're game. So you, one. so Poor you Justin, bet your huh? ass, you bet your ass that I got that free medium Pepsi, and I showed up to a suite with the medium Pepsi. Oh, that's hilarious! I I think I I definitely uh, uh, posted about the medium Pepsi as well. I had it in my hand, and I was. I, I loved it. It was very refreshing. Yeah. Beautiful. On a 40 degree day. <laughs> just the funniest part was like, it, it was so funny, the whole medium Pepsi thing. And then it just took, it just went to another level when people were getting into the stadium. It was like, yeah, I have a family of four and they gave us one. <laughs> That's what Justin said. It's true. And I remember before, before we even got there, I think Justin tweeted out something like this. No, no, no. You get one. Even before, yes, it, even, even went into the stadium. Because I was, because you know, it, it was, it all came out that week, and it was like, oh, ho, ho, they're doing this. But I'm like, wait, this makes less sense than you think, because yeah. you only less, get one. Yeah. That's a great shirt. It makes less sense than you think. That mm-hmm. should definitely be on a shirt. Oh yeah. wait, I think I, I think I actually tweeted that I don't know what you guys are so upset about. This is league wide. I thought it was a Pepsi NFL thing. And I was like, this is league-wide. We're going to get it everywhere. Makes less sense than you think. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I was so thankful for that gift they gave us. It's like, yes, we get to, we get to joke about something for you know the next Oh, I did a soda days. review. That was that was the favorite thing that I did is I was <laughs> I actually – I that, but I got to. I was in the, I was in the DraftKings suite, and um, I, I did a soda review like I was Dave Portnoy. And uh, – <laughs> That's 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 what I did, and that, that I'm, was, I'm that curious. Was very what did fun. what did you give it? I'm curious. Uh, I I don't know. I'm pro- I, I pro- what'd you give it? Three ice cubes. What'd you give it? I don't know. I, I may I may have done a bad thing. Gave it like a six point nine out of ten or something. I don't know. <laughs> we we should have. I was disappointed. No family like got like little cups and like rationed it out and like took a video <laughs> of that. Like there was mm. so much good things to be done. Yeah, and people and really do, dropped and you know the what? ball just on like, it. Just like you said, Bobby. You know, you're right. We should be thankful. It's the, it's the joke that keeps on giving. We're 
we're we're a year you know later and we're a year and a half whatever it is we're still laughing about it yeah. oh yeah it's, that's 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 a memory baby they're giant, like the new york times creating memories for their fans like six months uh <laughs> Um, let's see. What, what, what we're almost at an hour. Well, we got one more. We got one more. Yeah, bring it. I love it. Hey guys, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. In about ten hours, it's my birthday. Oh, so we're I, how old are you? So how actually, old are you going to be? I'm, I'm actually on old as shit. I'm actually on <laughs> on your show for my birthday, so I appreciate it. That's good yeah. to know. Happy birthday. Yeah. So everyone tweet at LPG. Happy birthday, oh, yeah. LPG. Yeah, that's that's what I want. Thank you so much. Everybody everybody tweet at Adam and say, yeah. you know, it's the best birthday present you can get is to be on Talking Giants. So we'll wow. see. So, so since it's your birthday, we're going to ask you to do something for us. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, sure. We've sure. been teasing. Sure. When are we going to do what? the what? Talking Giants? What? How many other stadiums do I have to put Talking Giants stickers on? Because I come through all the time. Philly was my favorite. Philly was, was the, the best because it was right in November, and it was our presidential campaign stickers. That's so. right, and I smashed it. Which, by the way, the reason this the reason this is connected is because I'm an idiot, and I'm considering voting for Kadarius Tony in the next election. Um, <laughs> why does he take everything as a slight? Like I like he posted a, he like I threw this and I was like look I was like look look how good he could throw sixty yards on the move and he's like eighty I did eighty yards I was like dude I'm complimenting you like he has he I've I've noticed this because there has been heat on him he thinks everyone's just always gunning for him yeah Bobby I think you're way off base there because if someone made fun of your five hundred k and told you you only make 300k you would immediately tell him it's 500k so I, i'm calling your bluff there <laughs> okay that's that's fair, that's fair. That's fair. um but I, I i like the guy i don't care even if his people don't like us it is what it is so <laughs> for for your birthday we're gonna ask you to tell when are we gonna do this talking giants you know uh with lpg and brandon jacobs interview i already have every question in my head i want to ask him about playing the so- end I've been watching him work his son in practice. I want to talk to him about getting a boxing fight, uh, you know, a, a, a fight with Mark Colombo. Um, I mean, I've got a, I've got so many Brandon Jacobs questions in my head right now. All right, so let me ask you a question. So if I set the – I promised you a long time ago, and I have to stick to my word. If I get – we're going to get Brandon Jacobs with or without Braden. Um, Without, because I want to talk about him, like, beating up Mark Colombo, and he may want to be a little more – polite in front of his son all right so if i let's shoot when's the next time that i can get on talking giants whenever you want my man all right so i promise you the next time that i am on this show <clears throat> that i'll be on this show with brandon jacobs wow i appreciate you happy birthday i appreciate that well we'll, we'll talk you. offline but i just wanted to put some pressure on you um you know me i hate asking you for things because you you know like we talked about the top of the show you're constantly getting asked for for hey look i i have uh uh, i get asked a lot i don't check any of my messages now i haven't checked them in in years um i am selective i mean granted i don't check all the way through but if i go one swipe of 50 and i click on one and they say, hey, you know, I asked for an Eli Manning, you know, game one jersey and you've you never even answered me. Then I just close it back up again and, and move on. I mean, I don't have access like that. People think I have access to the locker room like I could just go take whatever I want. And uh, unfortunately, I'd be calling Justin f- to get me out of jail in a heartbeat because you'd be in Florida, yeah. Bobby, not caring. But pick uh, you up. it would it was it's if I could come through for people with stuff that I own. I will do it. If I can come through for an ex giant, like I just did, uh, I think I just gave away some um, Kyle uh, uh, cleats because I told people just donate whatever you want to Brad Benson's uh, GoFundMe page. I don't care if it's a dollar or $20 or $100, and I'll put you into a hat. And then some girl won a pair of Rudolph cleats just because she sent me a picture of it. And I'm, and I'm going to continue. <laughs> Me, I'm going to continue to do all of that, and and I'll give away, I'll give away a bunch of stuff. I think I think I made more of these, so I'm going to give I'm going to give these away. That's one of your best. Ah. Has anyone told they you they hate you because you had a Joe Judge jersey? Uh, uh, just Gettleman. Yeah. 
<laughs> I just remember I, one of my first memories of you was like me complimenting you on Twitter, and someone goes like, "That guy sucks." He had a Pat Shermer jersey. Yeah. Oh, um, my Pat Shermer jersey, my Michigan State jersey. Yeah. He I really got an idea it. for you. He it really just, liked it, by the way. It just popped in my head. Shoot. Maybe like a Brian Dable hockey sweater. You know, that's not wow. a bad idea. I was thinking of a, I was thinking of a Rangers jersey with uh with Dable on the back but I could probably only do it no I guess they don't have to get past this series right well me and you are big we're big lightning fans and Tampa uh, are lightning gonna pull this series off no they're not we're not big lightning fans. get out of here with that <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see if you're paying attention Joe Rubeck known known lightning fan see I could go the Giants jersey Oh, that's so cool. Oh, okay. So I have, you know, obviously I can't, obviously I can't just go like a hockey jersey. I'd have to, I could do a Giants front and then a a Rangers back with Dable on the back. That's actually a really sweet idea. That's that's what I'm here for. Happy birthday. Um, Joe, you go make it, you go pay for it. Happy birthday. (laughs) Well, I'm going to, I got, we're going to send you an updated ring of honor shirt. Um, uh, what sweet, what, sweet, what other sweet. shirt do you want? Do you, we just made a new one that said "Dirt Bags" for the O line. Hog, yes. hog Molly's out. Dirt Bags in. Yeah, that's why so, I'm wearing the Hog Molly shirt to retire I, the shirt, so it's Dirt Bags now. I don't even know that name correct. I'm making uh, a Lyman Dirt Bag jersey, so that's already in the works. So I love it. So Dirt Bag one would be awesome. But but I don't I don't own a media some clowns, and, and that's my favorite. Okay, okay, that really is my favorite too. I think mm. it, it's our probably our best seller. So maybe the only one that was better was the thank you Eli when Eli retired. You know, yeah, like yeah. that that one will always be the best seller. And you you own the only uh one of these shirts. I do. I do I own that shirt. I I ordered it for you and like within fifteen minutes our bosses were like, This cannot be up on the website. Are you guys insane? <laughs> um so uh LPG license plate guy, happy birthday, and we always appreciate you coming on. I appreciate it. Justin Bobby, continue doing what you're doing. You're you know, I can't leave without saying your uh, insane dedication to the, the, just the numbers and the breakdowns is just crazy, man. It You, you know, hard work pays off. So just just keep doing what you're doing because you just keep growing and soon you'll be on the sideline and everybody's going to hate your guts. So it's going to be great. Well, they're going to hate our guts, but we won't be on the sideline. But we are going <laughs> to see you at training camp. So we'll, we'll see you then, man. I, I won in that van so bad, bro. You got it. Uh, thanks, guys. See ya. All right. Thank you to License Plate Guy. Happy birthday again. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for listening. And before we wrap up, we got to talk about Roman. When the moment for intimacy arrives, you got to be ready. You got to be Roman ready. ready. Whether you've been in a relationship for years or you're just getting started, having the confidence that comes from preparation means you're free to enjoy the moment when the moment comes no pun intended even though you're far from ordinary that's true the truth is is that ed is really common what's the percentage bobby percentage of men that have ed um, ages uh ages 40 to 70 one in three one in three would be 33 percent more wow i remember hearing all so much more how so what is it 52 percent of guys age 40 to 70 experience some Dang, form that's of over erectile half, dysfunction y'all. so don't feel it's, bad about it Overhead. Don't feel bad. Go to GetRoman.com slash world, Talking Giants versus the world, now to speak to a U.S. licensed healthcare professional about erectile dysfunction. Get $15 off your first month of treatment. A U.S. licensed healthcare professional, they're going to work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, ships you free with two-day shipping. Straightforward, convenient, discreet. Go to GetRoman.com slash world today, and if you're prescribed, get $15 off your first month of ED treatment. Make sure you're ready to have the confidence and control this summer. Be ready, Roman ready. All right. With uh, again, thank you, license plate guy, for coming on. We'll be back on Friday. Mini camp roundup. I think media is there all three days, so we'll have a lot of info coming out 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 of mini camp. Um, so we'll wrap that up on Friday. That's the end of practices until training camp. So so we got to take advantage of that. So uh, we appreciate you guys. We'll see you on Friday. Until then, let's go big blue. <laughs>